Today we have the pleasure to speak with Reynald Sadik. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to start with a question uh, about Barcelona. You uh, last year uh, released the uh, last installment of, uh, of Trilogy, Ragnarok. And what's now? What's after Ragnarok? Well, no, now we're finished. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's the after the end of times? Yeah, right. now, now you know, in, in circular uh, thinking such as the Norse, um, Ragnarok is also uh, very much about uh, beginnings. So, uh, um, and in many ways, I I kind of feel also that with uh, Valuna uh, that that uh, that I only just begun. That uh, it's only started. Uh, there are so many things uh, I want to explore and, and do with Valuna. So, so there will definitely be be much more music uh, coming. Um, of course, I have things that I'm working with, but it's it's a bit too early to speak publicly about it. But uh, yeah, maybe soon. Okay. Uh you're uh, working now on your new project with Ivar Bernson. Yeah. Uh, Uxia? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and what's the difference between Uxia and Uxia? I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but... Yeah, it's not so bad. <laughs> yeah. And what's, what's the difference between the, those two? Well, Skuksho um, was also a commissioned piece like this, when we were asked to write um, Piece. And, and one can say that Skuksho had a specific framework when, when we were asked to do it, it was supposed to be Valduna and, and Slaved together. Whereas uh, now we are more, in a sense, free to, to, to do more what we what we, what we can think differently. We don't have to think that we have to make music that, to fit both acts. We can basically uh, start with blank sheets and, and uh, think differently and, and that is what we plan to do to explore it and, and uh, try something new so it's a it's a very um, very extensive project for for the oldest musical festival in uh, in Norway uh, in Bergen in Norway that's where the sort of main uh, premiere of it will be but also um, some of the thematics of, of the project is, is very much about uh, the ancient history along the coast, which was, of course, very important for, for our country. Um, and, uh, and so that, that is the main thematic, and, and so um, the piece will be performed on, on uh, four different other locations uh, with local variations, basically. So. Um, uh, each that is specific to their ancient history. So we're basically basically doing a lot of research about these specific places. What was here 2,000 years ago? What what can we say about the the, uh, the culture that that lived here? How did it develop, etc. So so it's a very extensive project, not only because of the music, but also because of the the concept and and, and the the research we are we are doing also, so it's very exciting. I love I love to do different things and, and to to uh, yeah to challenge uh, both myself and and the the limits of of, uh, of art and and that is what we're doing here. Uh, and and school show was also uh, a combination of different uh, both modern instrumentation and ancient instrumentation and we're doing this here uh, now as well perhaps it won't be as much metal into it perhaps more acoustic based uh, well we'll we'll see we are, we are not uh, done yet uh, are there some plans for uh, for a record or is it just a, a live project as of now it's a live project but you never know. It depends a bit uh, on how how happy we are with it, and and also the response uh, after after we did the performance of Skook Show. We really felt that we wanted to 
to, to sort of portray, show, show the music to, to a broader audience. So we decided to record it. And, and I don't know. It's now the focus is on, on these concerts, and, and then we will see how, what, what happens next. That's too, too early to say. You've talked a little bit about the research. And uh, if I'm right, you are building the instruments you are using by yourself. Um, yeah, uh, well, not all of them. Uh, some of them I, I had people build to me. But especially in the beginning, when I started uh, Valdrona, because um, now, the last maybe five, five, six, seven years, there is this huge uh, revival going on and a lot of reenactment and, and suddenly there is a big interest for these things and there are more people building them and, and perhaps also Valdona is part of that, uh, making that. Uh, so, especially in the beginning, uh, I, there were not many people who knew about them and built them anymore, uh, only a few people. So I basically uh, either had to have somebody build it for me or, or build it myself. I, I couldn't go to a store <laughs> and buy it. So yeah, so a bit of both, I guess. So uh, when it comes to building the, these ancient instruments, are you relying more on the academic scientific approach or are you are finding the right people who know the traditional ways to build them? Uh, well, so, some of these instruments, you have to remember, don't have a tradition anymore. They, they, um, they don't, it's not a living tradition. Uh, it disappeared from use, so it's basically... A, well, so, for instance, the, uh, the Kravik lyre I'm using um, a lot is um, an example of, of, of a broken tradition, but still, the, the good thing there is that we have we have the original in quite good shape so there there, there is one really good builder left and he, and he builds them after the like a replica uh, of the original and um, but but some of these instruments are a tradition that is living like for instance the the goat horns and cow horns that's a living tradition and, and and uh, the use of tadlharpa, the bowed instruments, I use quite a lot. That is a tradition that we had a lot in the northern region, like even as Estonia, Finland, Sweden and Norway. Um, and um, Finland was the, the last place where, where this tradition survived. And it, it basically died out in the early 1900s. So that's quite recent. Um, and then it disappeared for like 60 years and then people started to pick up the uh, but still we have a lot of the instruments the old ones so so um, but like I do with all my work with Alduna whether or not it's uh, building instruments or researching uh, runes or researching uh, old musical traditions I, I always start with what we know uh, and dig into the sources in, in an academic fashion but also you have to remember that uh, the music is also a lot about performance and, and, and in that sense um, the sources will only take you this far and then it's you, you have to go into a more, more um, practical approach and, and try out what works and what doesn't work um, uh, these are, in many ways, that that that, that is in many ways uh, timeless things. Um, what works and what doesn't work. Uh, so a bit of both, both the intuitive and practical, but also the academic approach, I guess. Um, uh, in the Verjuna, music is always somehow in the center, but all of it has. Uh, I think I feel about it this way. It has strong spiritual vibe too. It all. And uh, you're doing also the rooms, uh, you're building the instruments, the jewelry. And um, is there a spiritual factor in these things or it's just uh, utility? Um, for me, there is uh, definitely a spiritual side to it, for me personally. Uh, and also, of course, a lot of the subjects have. 
um, have many levels. But on the other hand, it, it is also, I try and, and make music that where, where, um, where I'm not preaching any truth or, or like saying that it's either this or that or you are supposed to feel this or that or color it with too much with my own perception of things but rather leave room also for the listener to have their uh, to have to have their experience of it uh, so there is definitely rooms and, and many levels to it and, and for, for me personally there is definitely a, a spiritual side side to it but also a philosophical side to it um, it's uh, Baldona's music is very much about nature our our relationship to nature and, and to each other uh, and um, and to to something bigger than yourself, whether or not that's a spiritual thing or or nature itself or how you choose to view upon it, that's that's an open question and one that you can sort of uh, determine yourself. And you've said earlier that uh, these uh, things, the reconstruction of the history, and uh, the returning. Do you think this is um, some sort of fashion, or uh, is it because uh, the world we live in is full of noise, struggles, political, social, and uh, religious, and uh, this is somehow a reaction to these struggles uh, that people are seeking the more primal, ancient ways? I think for, for some people it might be a fashion. It's the hip thing to be into Viking age and ancient stuff. Uh, or. But, but uh, no, seriously, I, I, I actually think that uh, very often you see that in society throughout time that whenever things get extreme in one direction, there is a counter, uh, uh, a counter action, a counter movement. And I do believe that there are many, way, uh, many people that live today in Western society especially uh, that have, have this longing for something else. Uh, for connectedness and perhaps for um, for a religion or, or or some path where you you can determine your own faith uh, or, or your own reality uh, rather than somebody religion in many ways especially universal religion such as Christianity or or uh, Judaism or, or uh, Islam is, is very much about um, founded on on on, a, um, on the thought that one's own belief is superior to others, and that's that's not a very healthy thing in my opinion. So um, I think many people are are looking to to other more including, more uh, more individual ways of viewing the world uh, that are more connected connected to nature. I also have to say that that is a modern thing, um, because even though the old pagan beliefs were nature-based religions, you have to remember that they they fought nature. Uh, living in nature was not a romantic <laughs> idea at all. That was uh, fighting to survive, uh, battling nature. That is why all of these circular myths and uh, everything is evolved around the cyclists of nature. Um, uh, but today it's, it, it's different. For us it's a romantic idea and a romantic approach to, to nature. We, we long for feeling that connectedness to, to, um, to something and someone, I guess. You've been playing some shows uh, in the US. What are the, uh, the that US uh, culture is reacting for your music as a non-European uh, uh, culture? I think many uh, Americans do feel European in many ways uh, and of course many of them were immigrants that most of them are immigrants that came from from Europe so uh, and, and perhaps the need to, to relate to something uh, some some older history than than um, uh, the more recent uh, uh, American history is perhaps 
uh, a strong driving force, uh, uh, a sense of um, searching for one's roots and identity. I, I understand very well that a lot of people are um, are are searching and and wanting to to find their their European roots. I, I understand that very well. Um, I uh, I do see that there are movements who, who sort of have a very Christian ap approach to paganism and very uh, non-including version of it, which is, to be quite honest, very um, very unpagan. <laughs> but these movements you have here in uh, in Europe as well, where where uh, uh, yeah you mix politics and and, uh, and those things into something that is in many ways personal. Um, and that's that's not a healthy. But um, my my impression we've done performances in in the U.S. both with Baldwin and I've also done done uh, classes and, and solo performances quite quite a bit there. And, and there are a lot of really really uh, uh, great people. Um, we've been very much welcomed. So very happy. Why do you think, why so many metalheads are listening to your music that is, uh, of course, playing not on the electric guitar, not on the uh, usual for, for metalhead, uh, for metalheads uh, set, for metalheads instruments? Mm. I don't know, I, I don't think there is one simple answer to that, but I, I do think that uh, there are, in, in some ways, there are similarities, at least to, uh, both conceptually and musically, uh, I would say. Um, conceptually, because um, Valduna is very much about um, what lies behind the music also. It's not only about the music, it's, it's what's behind the music, the thoughts and, and the, the meaning behind it and, and uh, the layers behind it. And, and I think that especially uh, in terms of, of, of black metal, that was, uh, in, in the early days of black metal, that was also the primary thing. What, what's behind the music and, and atmosphere and, and technique, that was secondary. Sound was secondary. Uh, it, was a, it was more of pure expression. And then, ultimately, it became more about technique and less about uh, spirit and emotion. It, it became more about how good your <laughs> guitar sounded or how fast you could do the blast beat, so stuff like that and, and ultimately removed a little bit of the nourishment in, in that genre, um, uh, in my personal op op opinion. Uh, so, so I guess people see a similarity there, but, but on the other hand, I, it's my impression that uh, for instance, a lot of metal people very often like folk music. Uh, very often they like classical music as well. Uh, this, this visual music style. And, and uh, I, I guess in many ways the metal music is, is like that also. Uh, is, is somehow connected to it. So, so it, it is definitely understandable. Uh, I can definitely understand it. Are you listening to some uh, black metal or, or maybe uh, metal of recent kinds recently? Not, but that being said, uh, I almost never listen to music at all. Um, uh, not necessarily, well, some periods I, I have a need to do and do, of course, um, try and explore <laughs> new things. And, and but most of the time I, I don't, uh, because I work so much with music every day and, and uh, when, when the work day is over I don't feel like <laughs> cranking up the music again, so, so um, I don't get to listen so much to it. Do you think that uh, the shows uh, such as the Vikings uh, are helping to uh, maintain the, the legacy, the Scandinavian legacy, or maybe are just uh, the entertainment? Well, it's both. Uh, I do believe, even though the the, the show 
uh, is perhaps not always historically correct. I, I have to say it's a step in the right direction in, in terms of wanting to portray the culture in, in a more nuanced way that it's not barbarians or, or these, uh, they're not upholding all of these myths at least. So that I, I think is a good thing. Um, but we have to remember that it's an entertainment show made to entertain the masses, not made to please history nerds like me or, or Viking reenactors. Um, but I think it's a good thing because, you know, a very positive effect of, of this huge interest uh, for, for, for the old Nordic history is, is even making people in Norway uh, able to, to dare and uh, approach our own history because we have to remember after World War II the, there has been a lot of uh, shame connected to, to, uh, to all of these symbols because of, of, of the Nazi misuse of, of them and, and uh, right-wing misuse of them in, in the later period uh, even to this date there still is uh, a lot of um, these unhealthy things uh, going on in my opinion um, and, and uh, so, but the good thing now is that we are more than them. Uh, the, the, the movement of healthy interest for, for our, and proudness of, of, of the culture, uh, of many levels of the culture, not only the, the warrior uh, thingy, um, is, is, is a very good thing, uh, I think. Um, so, so I think it has a very positive effect. On the, on the history and, and how we how we approach that history. Have you ever been uh, interested in some uh, maybe Slavic uh, pagan cultures uh, or maybe uh, some of that region? I'm generally very interested in in, um, in culture, whether or not it's uh, Slavic or, or uh, Siberian or uh, African or. or I think there are, and, and what's fascinating is that when you go far enough back in time, you see all of these similarities and, and how, how you are connected uh, back in time, and that's very fascinating. And, uh, of course, in, in, in my work, early work with Baldun as well, because the old history is very fragmented, and, and uh, so it's only natural to look to also to, to other neighboring meanders for, for inspiration and, and for also clues, actually. So, um, yeah, I'm very interested in, in Slavic uh, and other cultures. Okay, that's all we wanted to ask you for, right. for this interview. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs>